problem one is 33.5. It deals with a traveling electromagnetic wave. Now I told you earlier, and I wasn't joking, that I know very few equations in physics. I can derive many from the few that I know. I know Maxwell's equations. Yes, I do. <laughs> Certainly after <laughs> this course. I also know some of the consequences of Maxwell's equations related to traveling waves. And I will share those with you. And if you remember those, because it would be rather silly to derive them every time, then it's very easy to write down traveling electromagnetic waves with the vectors in the right direction and the amplitudes all correct and the plus and minus signs correct. The first thing that I happen to remember is that the E vector is always perpendicular to the B vector. The second is that E as well as B are both perpendicular to the direction of propagation. The third is that E and B both are in phase at all moments in time. What does that mean? It means if one reaches a maximum value, the other reaches a maximum value at the same moment in time, of course at right angles. And if one goes through zero, the other goes through zero. That's what it means. Always in phase. And then B0, which is the amplitude of the magnetic field factor, equals E0 divided by C when the electromagnetic radiation is in vacuum. Now, independent of electromagnetic waves, what always holds is that the pointing vector, which tells you how much energy per second flows per square meter out of a particular surface, equals E cross B divided by mu zero. So this is energy per second flowing through each square meter and I will call that flux. This is an energy flux. What also always holds, lambda equals C times the period of one oscillation. Don't confuse this T with Tesla. So this is also C divided by the frequency of the radiation F. What you will often see introduced is a wave number k which has nothing to do with the unit vector in the z direction, nothing. That k equals 2 pi divided by lambda and that has as a unit 1 over meter. Now since omega equals 2 pi times the frequency f, it follows immediately that omega divided by k also is the speed of light, the speed with which electromagnetic radiation propagates itself in vacuum. Now if you can remember all these things, that would help. I happen to remember them. We have here in problem one, we have a frequency which is 4.0 times 10 to the 13 hertz. So it follows immediately that omega equals 2.5 times 10 to the 14th radians per second and it follows that lambda equals 7.5 times 10 to the minus 6 meters. 75,000 angstroms if you like that unit. This is infrared radiation. We're also being told that the direction of V is in plus Y and we're being told that the B vector oscillates in the direction of X, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, with that angular velocity omega. And you know B0, whatever that is. So the B vector, if we write that down, in terms of X, Y and Z and all moments in time, would be the amplitude of the B vector times cosine omega t, which indicates the oscillatory character, minus k y in the x direction. And k then, here means simply 2 pi divided by lambda, if you want to write for this k 2 pi divided by lambda, uh, be my guest. Now let's look at these things. 
This minus sign is absolutely crucial. If this were a plus sign, the wave would not be propagating in the plus y direction. And you can immediately check that for yourself, increase t by a teeny weeny little bit. If you want the cosine function to be exactly the same, you would have to increase y by a teeny weeny little bit so that omega t minus ky remains the same. So for this wave to propagate in the plus y direction, it is important that this sign here and this sign here have an opposite sign. If they both have the same sign, minus minus or plus plus, then the wave would run in the minus y direction. And this x tells you simply that the b vector oscillates in the x direction, sometimes plus, sometimes minus. Well, omega, you already know. If you are interested in k by any chance, then I believe that is 8.38 times 10 to the 5 meters minus 1. Now, since you know b0, you also know e0, because e0 equals b0 times c. So if we write down now the e vector as a function of x, y, z, and t, then we would get e0 here, which you know. And then I get exactly this same argument, omega t minus ky. Why? Because I mentioned earlier that e and b are always, at any moment in time, exactly in phase. And that's only possible if this is identical to that. Now comes the question, what is the direction that I should put here? What is the unit vector that I should put here? And for that I'm going to make a drawing. And I'm going to make a drawing of a right-handed coordinate system. Always make a drawing of a right-handed coordinate system. And a right-handed coordinate system is a coordinate system whereby x cross y equals z. Don't even think of ever doing it in another way, because you get into deep trouble. So let this be x, and let this be y, then this would be z. Convince yourself that x cross y would then be z. Now pick any moment in time, and let us assume that the b vector is in this direction. Of course, it's not only along the x direction in this direction, but since it's a plane wave, it's everywhere here. The same magnitude and the same direction. And this wave propagates to the right. And a little later in time, half a period in time, if assume that this is the maximum value b possible in this direction, half a period in time it will be pointing down. And a quarter period in time it will go through zero. And they will all go through zero at exactly the same time. In what direction at this moment in time should I now point E so that, and this is one of my statements that I made earlier, so that E cross B is in the direction of E, which means in this case in the direction of positive Y. Well, that should not give you any problems. The only way that you can do that is when E is in the plus z direction. Convince yourself that only then is e cross b in the plus y direction. So, that means that if we now have to finish this vector notation for e, we have to write down here a z roof and it's all done. I can now ask the question, suppose we wanted to move that wave in the other direction, not in plus y but in minus y. What would we have to change? Well, we could change this minus sign to a plus sign and this minus sign to a plus sign. What counts is, actually, is not so much that this becomes a plus, but that these two signs here and here are the same. But that's not enough. If you want E cross B to be in the opposite direction, you also must either put a minus sign here 
so that you get a minus x and leave the plus here or you put a minus sign here in the minus z direction and leave the plus there. So whenever you have to change the direction of propagation, keep in mind that it's not enough to only change the signs inside the brackets of the cosine terms, but you also have to take into account that E cross B must change direction.